The threshold for whether a TIA or a TIS is required varies depending on the jurisdiction. In this video, I'll show some examples from cities and states and their procedures and policies for whether or not a TIA is required for a particular development. So for this location, the requirements are based on individual land uses. So depending on the type of land use listed here, so for example, a single family residential development, if there's greater than or equal to 150 dwellings, that triggers the need for a traffic impact analysis. And then also there's guidance provided in this for this location about the trips that are generated and whether or not that requires the traffic impact analysis. And this is based on peak hour trips or daily trips and other specific information. So some jurisdictions can have very specific land use and trip generation characteristics. Here's another example of a city where the TIA requirements are based on 150 or more peak hour vehicle trips. In this location, another city, there are different study types that are required. So for lower levels of trips that are generated, only an access location and design review is required, and that's for less than 50 peak hour trips and less than 1,000 daily trips. And the requirements increase as the peak hour and daily trips increase. Here's another one from a city. There's several criteria here. A couple of these are based on the daily trips, 500 or more or 100 or more in the peak hour. And also level of service. So if it's a level of service D or worse and the project is likely to significantly worsen the condition. Also, if 40% of the total traffic is truck traffic or if it intensifies the usage, density or traffic traffic generation of the site above the level currently allowed by zoning codes. So several different perspectives and thresholds in this example. Here's another one from a from a town, and this is 150 or more peak hour trips or 1500 or more daily trips. This is from a state now. This is 3000 vehicles per day or more based on an average weekday. And for the purposes of determining the requirement to submit a TIA or a TIS, no adjustments such as modal split, pass by trips, or internal capture rates are allowed. So this is common to see this, that it's a raw uh, trip generation estimate based on that particular land use before any adjustments are made. Here's another state perspective, and this is focusing on exceeding 100 vehicles in the peak hour. And another state perspective giving several different criteria to determine whether or not that traffic impact analysis is needed. If it's over 100 peak hour trips to a state highway facility or 50 to 100 peak hour trips to a state highway facility and the state highway facilities are experiencing noticeable de delay approaching unstable traffic flow conditions, which are level of service C or D. So it's a, a lower threshold if there are already congestion or delay issues on that state highway. And then a lower threshold, only one to 49 peak hour trips. If those road conditions are much worse, so that's level of service E and F, or if there's a potential risk for a traffic incidence, which significantly increases. So congestion related crashes, uh, issues with site distance considerations, increase in traffic conflict points, or change in local circulation networks that would impact a state highway. So through these examples, you can see there's a lot of a variation. A lot of them have some similarities, but each jurisdiction has their own kind of take or perspective on when a TIA or TIS is required. So it's very important to look at the local jurisdiction and what would apply in a particular situation with a development. 